Hey guys, welcome back. BDCKR here. We are back with our weekly P and Q and C and AT videos. This is season six, episode twenty-six. We're not going to explain what the letters mean because it takes too long. But this, uh, the P is for podcasts. And if you are on the video, check the links in the description for all major podcasting platforms as far as we're aware to access this. And just right off the bat, we're going to say that this is going to be a continuation from last week's episode where we discussed some claims made by somebody who said they were number one with 11 million battle points who took 15 seconds for each fight, including low times and everything. And right. that's the starting point. And we've got an another comment from this person and we've got more information. Well, not so much another comment. I mean, that was originally another Reddit, set of comments, a Reddit thread yeah. we we're talking about. So this is maybe, maybe it's the first comment from this. That's true. Video. We got the first comment from this person, some more information from the Reddit threads. And we're just going to talk about it some more. And I think, um, two things that I want to maybe get out of the way right off the bat is we're sharing information. I noticed one of the things on the Reddit thread is that there was somebody replying that was using very similar language to the language that we used. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's inherently bad. I think mm -hmm. if somebody watched this video and agreed with us, that's great. But we're not here to get like a bunch of people to just pile on this one person, right? right, we're, right. we're using this more as a lens to talk about stuff in general. At least I right. am. I don't know. because I think that's well, fair to say for both of us. Yeah, because I think yeah. that if there's any one issue that... I mean, besides the lack of updates, if there's any one issue that's carried through through the years of playing Injustice has been uh, cheating and hacking and glitching. And I, I can't... Um, we can't I, wash our hands of that responsibility, yeah, we, obviously. We can't be surprised, considering that our channel saw a lot, most of its growth, based on yeah. glitches, yeah. which is a form of cheating. But in our minds, or at least we've talked about it, that that's a wholly separate thing from hacking. And it's also a wholly separate thing from misrepresenting what we yeah. do. Yeah, we glitching to us is fine because it doesn't negatively impact other players. The worst thing you could say it does is it lets us get battle points faster than we would have if we hadn't glitched. Right. And um, that makes it like harder for other people to be competitive. But to us, that's minor enough that, you know. Right. I mean, that is, I mean, that's, it's an indirect uh, issue because you do end up competing at a level higher than you would earlier than you would yeah. as far as the number of battle yeah, points. Yeah, so you get more battle points. And so that's there, the main. Yeah, so there is, I mean, there is an indirect impact. But I think, I mean, well, we can talk about that more a little bit later. Yeah. But I think we're sort of getting into the weeds a little We're getting bit. into the weeds. I think the one other thing that I want to say is that this would all be cleared up, I think, in one way or the other uh, with some video. Uh, just because I know the user's on iOS and they have onboard uh, screen recording. And so just, like, I think, you know, one way or another, we could we could have it over and done with. You know, um, if we, if the user was willing to take video and just upload one ultimate battle, we'd just see how long it took. Oh, I, I'd know. be convinced one ultimate battle that took two minutes, 120 seconds and not more, but uh, we're not going to see it. Or even if I guess the, the second claim was 210 seconds, which is yeah. what, four minutes. So seeing, seeing either, you know, we'll, we'll look at the claims I think now, but just okay. if possible video from, uh, the user would be, you know, one way to clear this up. Right. So the end. Like you said, it's a taking off point, but I think we need to address at least the concrete parts. And I, I don't, maybe we'll we'll gloss over or avoid some of the discussion about strategies because I think whatever the, the case is, I, I, I think we're right when mm -hmm. it comes to strategy. And that's definitely a, a more of a, a qualitative opinion kind of stuff. But the concrete stuff is where it really falls apart a little bit. Yeah. So uh, we got our first comment from the person and it goes like this. Hey, I'm the person who got number one and is talked about at 258-ish. Uh, to clear a few things up, Yes, 24k reward is not possible. This is a typo. My bad. The 15 seconds for a battle was just that, the average for the battle itself. What I was trying to say was that the loading time was also about 15 seconds, depending on how laggy my phone was that day. There's a huge disparity between when it is lagging and not, so this number can sometimes be only like 10 seconds or something, when sometimes it's more like a couple minutes. Not that both the time for the battle plus the time for the loading and other stuff was 15 seconds total. This is ridiculous even if you had a perfect phone and internet connection, which I do not. And then there's some information about the gears, and I think we're going to see Well, some this discussion, over. right? Because yeah. they were acknowledging that the points we were making were good, but the reasons why they weren't picking it. And I don't, I don't think that's worth getting into, because it, yeah. it, it gets past the point I want to make about sort of the general ideas about how people uh, make say stuff on the internet. Yeah, and I think I also said in the original video, I don't know if that was in the first version or not, that, you know, it was entirely possible that they're just playing suboptimal because they prefer it, or for any other number of reasons. It doesn't right. inherently right. mean anything for somebody to be playing with. A specific gear set over a different one right except maybe if the gear set is not optimized it makes it a little bit more difficult to do it as fast right and uh, so we skip past all the yeah. gear and session. then getting down to the tldr 
So TLDR, I messed up some of the numbers and meanings. Sorry, I'm dyslexic, and I should have typed those comments slower to make sure it was more accurate. I was mostly trying to answer the questions as fast as possible because there were so many comments. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask below this comment or on my Reddit account, and then, you know, the Reddit account. I would really like to clear up everything that I did this legitimately and was trying to give some advice to newer players and how you can grind the ladder faster when you don't have all the newest gears and flashpoint slash metal characters, etc. So I, I maybe I want to start before we even get further like to the actual point. I have a real big bias against people casually throwing out the idea of I'm dyslexic or any kind of other neurodivergent stuff. Yeah. When to me the issue is clearly not dyslexia. And for people who don't know, I mean we all have a general idea because dyslexia is such a commonly used term. But I pulled this from the Mayo Clinic. And so dyslexia signs in teens and adults are similar to those in children. Some common dyslexia signs and symptoms in teens and adults include difficulty reading, including reading aloud, slow and labor intensive reading and writing, problem spelling, avoiding activities that involve reading, mispronouncing names or words, or problems retrieving words, uh, yeah. trouble understanding jokes or expressions that have a meaning not easily understood from the specific words, idioms such as piece of cake, meaning easy. Yeah. Uh, spending an unusually long time completing tasks that involve reading or writing, difficulty summarizing a story, trouble learning a f foreign language, difficulty memorizing, and difficulty doing math problems. And to me, you know, all these difficulties and all these issues, it, it's not difficulty reading what you wrote or understanding what you wrote. Um, the predominance of it is, is, is an input problem. I mean, I, some of it is output for sure, but it's taking it in, and the output isn't that it comes out a completely different idea conceptually it's that you have difficulty expressing yourself properly yeah and i i just don't know enough information in this case to comment but i'm willing to sort of go with what you said here well all right so here's the thing i, right? I think that that makes intuitive sense to me at least yeah because when we talked about i mean remember when we used to watch Rhett and link all the time yeah and this came up with the idea when we talked about the idea of uh, ocd how people throw that term around really yeah. commonly and, and it really doesn't mean at all how people use it right so you can have uh obsessive compulsive personality traits but it, it sort of i don't know it minimizes the idea and it it's probably a little bit hurtful to people who actually suffer from the disease to have it used as uh as uh synecdoche yeah oh i love that word all right so i just learned a new word synecdoche where it's meant to represent something mm. else that it's not so yeah i i have a friend actually that i met in university first year that uh has ocd and he told me that his experiences when he comes to a new place, actually, uh, he has a lot of, he fixates a lot on numbers. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, odd numbers of things. Right. Um, and so when he comes to a new place, a lot of his time is spent learning sort of, uh, the numbers of the place, like the approximate number of steps it takes to get mm -hmm. from point A to point B and the number of like pots of like for flowers in an area and all that okay. stuff. And so, you know, his lived experience with OCD is that when he shows up to a new place, there's a period of time depending on how like information dense the surroundings are, which is not normally something anybody else even needs to think about, right? right? right. Um, but how basically countable his surroundings are, right? right. Where um, based off of the that amount of density, he has like a certain period of time where it's really hard for him to sort of memorize other stuff well because there's just so much input yeah, he's he's already doing memorization work basically right. on his day-to-day -day just from point a to point b and so it's hard for him to assimilate new information so i know that his like first little while at university was harder for that experience and that's not you know related to what we're getting back to but this is just that's just an example of you know when somebody says ocd right it's right. totally it's a totally different qualitative experience and he needed to have like um i i, I don't know the term for ocd specifically but like a stim right mm -hmm. for um like he had something that he could like press into his wrist hard enough that it like hurt like he had like a basically like a bracelet that he had okay. to like pull really tight yeah um when something in his environment was like uh i don't want to say upsetting i don't know what the term would be for ocd what so the is, appropriate term. is is that ocd or is that like a form of because when you start when you use the word stim it, yeah i know stimming is is more like an autism kind of thing autism, autism spectrum, spectrum disorder. disorder thing yeah i don't know what the equivalent term for ocd is but it's like i mean i guess that's the so, compulsion maybe but that's, that's a compulsion but then it's i guess something that you do specifically to help you but um, i think it was like a learned compulsion i think it was like a learned like oh yeah but you're managing compulsion. you're yeah. managing anxiety right something yeah. that you do over and over again so whether it's like flipping a switch on and off like 10 times specifically yeah. so that you could f uh, diminish your anxiety, control your anxiety. Yeah, so I guess that would fall under the category of compulsion for the OCD. 
Right. But so, you know, not, not relevant to what we're talking about, but like relevant to but, when well, people say OCD, that's what OCD means to my friend, which right. is a totally different thing to what OCD, what people have sort of appropriated the word to use. Right. And that's why, I mean, to me, my back is already up a little bit when it, the, the word dyslexia th- is thrown out, like it's the, an explanation why. And it, to me, it's not, I think part of it is if you make a mistake and you own it instead of trying to, you know, come up with some sort of excuse. And I mean, I'm not, we're, we're not saying this person doesn't have dyslexia, right? Right. Um, and we're not saying that there isn't, you know, when there's more issues with comprehension, right? Um, that there's there's possibility for some stuff to get lost in translation. But, you know, I think there right. are people who are more or less um, able to, you know, comprehend information coming in. And it still is a mistake, right? right. At some point, at some level, I think, is right. what I'm willing to say. So, I don't, again, I don't want to get too bogged down in quotes. I'm going to quote three other posts or three other uh, bits from the Reddit. Yeah. Just to be clear, just to see where we're coming from, where any misunderstanding might have happened, right? Yeah. So it's each battle takes approximately 15 seconds and nets four to 5,000 battle points with an additional reward of 24K every seven battles completed. Yeah. That's 55 and a half points per 105 seconds to complete the seven matches. It's still a lot, but you can earn points incredibly fast with an efficient enough team or strategy. So yeah. what they're saying, it's 105 seconds for all seven fights, everything included. And this is, this is, you can do it really fast with a good team strategy. Yeah. Another quote. Yeah, the time between... And this, we should oh. say that this is an old quote that um, in the response they're now saying is like, yeah, with obviously a new edit. this is not what I meant. So there's a new edit. So uh, a different thread. Yeah, the time between battle is factored into the 15 seconds per battle part. Anyways, yes, I am on iOS, iOS, and I only saw a few hackers under 10 total. And they're just things like full metal teams with max deaths. So no duplicate characters, gears on the same team. And the new edit was, uh, people have been asking about this, so I thought I would clear some things up uh, here. 15 seconds per battle is the average IRL time for a battle, and then loading takes another 15 seconds on average. This number is not super accurate because of the huge disparity between when when my phone is lagging and when it is not. Depending how slow my phone is that day, I was not trying to say that they're both done in 15 seconds total, just that they took both, or they both took 15 seconds on average. Oh, I lied. So, one more quote. Uh, And... So that's I think talking two about, more quotes actually. Oh, is it? So that that was talking about how fast it was, and okay, so it's maybe it's not 15 seconds of battle, maybe not 105. So if you double that to 210, that's still kind of ridiculously yeah. fast. Um, and I played way more than five hours a day to win. It was more like 10 plus with me playing for 24 hours the day before it expired to make sure I was ahead. I can beat battles in 15 seconds, including loading time. The battles last about seven seconds if done perfectly, though obviously certain characters' gears on the enemy team can slow that down i haven't lied at all about how i won and i'm frankly disappointed in the injustice community (laughs) that you guys find it so hard to believe that someone can win a season legitimately yeah and i think this comment here is both proof that there's very much internal inconsistencies but to me this comment here is also probably the closest thing that i've seen to sort of proof of my devil's advocate theory where they're not processing the numbers because it's in the same comment where they talk about five hours a day, um, sorry, more than five hours a day, where, like, you know, five hours a day is what we were saying it would have actually probably taken, right? No, no, we're, I was saying, uh... Yeah. Five hours a day is what you were saying it should actually probably take. No, three hours a day. Three hours a day, okay. Uh, that, that what we're talking about, the, the five hours was in a week, if you were actually doing 105 seconds for seven ultimate battle, or uh, a seven b- battle ultimate, yeah. it should take you five hours in the week yeah. to get 11 million points. And they're, I mean, this this is possibly a misunderstanding, but then instead of taking it as information, they're using that as a takeoff point to say, I played way more than five hours a day yeah. instead of five hours in a week. So th- this is this is the thing that is either sort of the smoking gun for uh, them hacking or not having actually done it, or it is sort of the proof that it's just a m- big misunderstanding, I think, well, I, it's depending, on, depending on how you look at it. Sure. And I guess it because it's somebody in the thread was talking about circumstantial <coughs> evidence, right? Yeah. So it is a it is either a deception, yeah, or it is a huge mistake. Yeah, I'm because, open to that possibility of both. But yeah, ten plus hours a day, and then twenty four hours a day. That's eighty four. That's eighty four hours is in the week plus. Way too much. Yes. There's no way that anybody played 84 to only get to 11 million battle points and, when they're claiming... And that's not fast. ...15 seconds, including loading time. So, yeah, that's incredibly, incredibly slow. So what slow. you're start, starting off with is the claim that is not just incredibly fast, but impossibly fast. Yeah. And then a claim 
that's the exact opposite that is that is crazy ridiculously crazy slow. In, inefficient yeah and so and in the same comment they talk about playing 24 hours a day before and then 10 plus you know every other day uh and even if you're talking about you know 10 plus is the average even if they're saying that the 24 was weighted into the average even though it seems like this person obviously right. has not looked at averages a lot 70 hours is still super 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 slow right it, it, especially when you start cl- the original claim was i wanted to try to help people out by telling them how you can do get to the first place with a really fast and efficient team yeah and then in the same comment you talk about you know sometimes being able to beat the battles in 15 seconds including loading time and then sometimes waiting way longer so the i think the problem is at this point there's enough conflicting information and enough of it like very little of it is possible or logical and the stuff that theoretically like theoretically you could take a really really long time to get that many battle points but that's totally not internally consistent with any of the other comments right i mean part of it is what you're you're talking about is whether you're you're, uh discussing or arguing things in good faith or not yeah and the first example of bad faith argumentation is that in you know on our channel this person is talking about i just want to show that i can do it legitimately and then in reddit is dig taking a dig at the injustice community saying yeah, you know, I'm disappointing you guys because some you think nobody can win it legitimately. And take a dig at us too, because in another comment they say, "I think it's ironic that we're." <laughs> oh yeah, the, that I'm the, getting the, accused the, by known cheaters. Yeah, and it, it, it misses the point completely, right? Because the issue isn't that you cheat, really. I mean, and if people have issue with the fact that we cheat, I think that's okay. Like it's fair. I, yeah. I like I understand people who have genuine issue. Right. I think our philosophy is different from other people's, and um, if you have issue with the fact that we cheat, I think that's actually fair. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with people having issue. And anybody who has has coexisted with us. They've chosen not to watch our content, I think, largely. Sure. And that's, you know, But to me, it's it's the lying, and the the worst part about it isn't just the principle of lying, is that, I said last video, this is an aspirational kind of thing. When you see people using teams, when you're relatively new, you see people using teams, and you aspire to do what they do, then bad information is going to be a huge time sink. Yeah, it's going to waste your time, and it comes at a huge cost. Or, I think even in cases where you would have spent the time anyways, it totally um, changes your expectations. Yes. And so it makes you disappointed with the time that you spent, I think, if you're expecting right. something totally different. Even if the ultimate thing you get is okay, and even if it might have been something that you would have put your time into anyways. Right. So when we talk about, you know, it's a big mistake at some point, you can it's harder to give somebody the benefit of the doubt and saying it's a big mistake. <coughs> and where you really see it is that when when you tell the truth, it's much easier than when you don't because you only have to keep track of the one thing. Yeah. You know it or you don't. If you need to change the story as you learn about mu- more about what you're saying, mm-hmm. you forget lots of things and you end up contradicting yourself. Yeah. And it's the contradictions, I think, that are the most problematic. Yeah. Um, so what you're seeing... so. We haven't been talking much about the footage up until now, but what you're seeing in the footage um, was from the beginning of the current season. You can see that because it was starting off with zero battle yeah. points. Um, each clip in this 57-minute video mm-hmm. is on the new device with the faster loading times playing with what I consider the the fastest, fastest team. team. Yeah. Um, and you're going to see how much real time it's actually taking. And what you're going to get is 448,000 battle points in 57 minutes mm-hmm. of play mm-hmm. with some pauses, actually, where just to show you the the accumulation of the battle points, mm-hmm. just as, um, like, I mean, we could have shaved a few seconds, I think, off yeah. this video. Sometime. I'm um, looking at gears, too. Right. So every five hours is 2 million plus. Mm-hmm. Right? So... You, what you're looking at really is um, th- this is a, a reasonable strategy for getting first place with more than 10 million battle points yeah. in about 21 hours of play, maybe just a little bit more, so about three hours of play yeah. a day. And what this is, what we're looking at here is called a heuristic. We're using this as a stand-in for uh, the other data, right? This right. is not like a perfect sort of algorithm for calculating how long it takes because the only thing the only way that we could get that is if we had a video of their fights right right and we're able to extrapolate and so uh this is this is us and other people will take more or less time right right but this is our best bet as somebody who's been playing for years 
this is the fastest that we've ever been able to do it, basically. Right. right? So this is what we're using as our sort of stand-in for uh, the video that we don't have, but ideally we will get, I and, think. Yeah, and when you, if you've played it, you get a feel for this. these actually being pretty fast fights. Yeah. Um, we delay it a few seconds each fight, potentially, in the easy fights by launching Aquaman's trident, his special one first, yeah. to start bleeding if possible, um, break a gear if possible too, but it means that Deathstroke really mouths through a lot of teams that might have otherwise slowed him down. Yeah. So the really fast teams, it costs the two seconds it takes to do the special yeah. one. And in most other teams, it saves a bit of time that would have dragged the fight on a bit if Deathstroke doesn't finish them off in his first special one. And I want to say, I still feel very idealistic at heart. And I want to believe on some level that there's just been a misunderstanding somewhere in the down the pipe. But I think the more sort of, and I, I think you've been very convincing in this just because of the, the information that you have here, when you lay out the numbers very clearly, right? Yeah. I feel like I'm the kind of person who'd be more likely to do benefit of the doubt and be what I am now sort of willing to more confidently say be, have been okay. taken in by it, right? Yeah. But, All right. So for the view, for sorry, for our podcast listeners, I want to point out that at about 20 minutes if you wanted to, you come and see the fight here. That was a perfect example of why this team is so brilliant. If you don't have this team, you have Killing Joke Joker in the first slot. You will be tempted to wait him out. With yeah. this team, not only did we knock a Killing Joke Joker first without waiting, but we kept the other two from using any of their power bars when they tagged in. So they yeah. each had three power bars coming in. They could have done a super. Super prioritizes faster than our specials. So they done a super we would have had to wait through the time. Never mind getting knocked out. We would have had to wait through the time. It would have delayed the fight even further. Yeah. So we should finish the numbers, right? Basically, it's taking us about seven minutes per seven fight ultimate or approximately 420 seconds, which is much... Sorry, you can... Yeah, it's, that's much slower than the original. <coughs> um, you okay? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm recovering from sickness, but the show must go on. <laughs> oh, we saw the showman last night. That was pretty good. Um, you saw it. I was mostly on my phone. Okay, so... <laughs> So we're talking like uh, 420 seconds. The original claim was 105 seconds. 420 seconds for a 7 fight ultimate. Right, for 7 fight ultimate. 105 seconds was the original claim, which was repeated a couple yeah. of times. And then the subsequent edited claim in one of the, the comments was 210 seconds, which yeah, is still and half then also, the time. Also, when it was lagging, they were saying it would be sometimes multiple minutes load time. And I don't even know like what that is. How yeah, that, that does, changes that does, the numbers, yeah. right? It's just that that changes the numbers from anywhere from no time right. to like years. So what we're talking about is from way faster than we're doing it. Yeah. To way longer because yeah, for from, us, twenty hours would twenty one hours would be yeah. 10, 10 million battle points. They either they either did it four times as fast as we did with the uh, initial fifteen seconds per fight, or twice as fast. Yeah. So it should have taken them half the time, but instead they took four times the time, eighty four hours. So six days with ten hours, one day with twenty four. For only 11 million battle points. Yeah, so so the two numbers given were either, if you look at our, our numbers, it, uh, it's either uh, their, their lowest and their highest estimates, right? Yeah. Are um, four times faster and four yeah. times slower than, than yeah. our numbers, which are so far apart, right? Right. That's orders of... One order of magnitude. One order of magnitude, yeah. 16 times. Yeah. Difference, yeah. Yeah. All right, so what's interesting to me, and this is where I make the connection, and we don't, uh, we're going to maybe digress a little bit from specifically injustice but in general claims on the internet so are you're not <coughs> you're not as interested in in strength training as i am i'm not right um and one of the areas where i think it's a really good functional strength is mm -hmm. hand strength yeah so there's a place called the grip board which i've been going to for years mm -hmm. and um so I, I, there's a bit of background I need to explain. So there's, you, you know what torsion spring grippers are? No. All right. So they're the that's the, the sort of the technical name for the one things that has two handles with the spring that connects the two handles where you squeeze them together and it distorts the spring at the top. You should probably Google this right now if you're watching our video or would it be too much work for us to put it up on screen? It, it might be. And we want to we're, we're filming this a little bit later and I want to get this up in good okay. time. So there's a company called Iron Mind. They make what's the industry standard? They call them the captains of crush grippers. And there is some prestige associated with certifying, proving that you can close the number three under their conditions. Yeah. But there's also one harder above that called the number four. And there was a man, Joe Kinney, who is the first number four closer, official mm -hmm. number four closer. Wow. Uh, he also claimed to pass 
a something called the inch dumbbell, which the 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 more the longer name is the Thomas Inch Challenge Dumbbell, which was a 172 pound dumbbell. It had a short handle, <coughs> but it was thick. It was two and uh, three eighth inches uh, diameter handle. Yeah. Okay. And he passed it from hand to hand, and there were two uh, official captains of Crush, um, people who had certified on number three, who re- reported that he made that claim. Yeah. And he made a bit of a, a career for himself, uh, publishing a video that explained his training methods and demonstrating what he did, and the problems. You know, it, over the years, there have been a few more people who have achieved a level where they could potentially close the number four gripper. Yeah. And as that happened, people started questioning a little bit about what things that were wrong with the video, why that even though he demonstrated complete dominance of the number four gripper yeah. in a way that is nobody has come close to doing that they yeah. can do only on a really easy gripper. Yeah. Never did that in front of anybody or even anything close to it. And it, it claimed that it only took one to two years of training. Yeah. And also some kind of ridiculous like squat training, like numbers that would probably kill the world's strongest man. Oh, okay. Like the, the amount of, um, uh, squats that, that, that he was doing like 60 times squats of 440, uh, pounds each day was, wow. Yeah. As, as a starting point for developing the strength to, to do the grippers. But anyways, so there was one, one thing I want to quote from a thread in the grip board where they're talking about this and it, it's really good. It was, a uh, uh, a member named Alawadi. I'll repeat again. Generally the weaker thinks the Superman strength feat is possible while the people who have done a thing or two, um, n- not, not knowing about these things doesn't believe the BS because it's just BS. And so there are people who have made claims and there's, there's a pattern to this. It's like there was the same thing happened in the speedrunning community where there was, um, I forget who it was, but, um, there was somebody who made, uh, uh, and held the world record for, I think like speedster or something. Right. And it turned out that it was literally impossible. Somebody went into the game's code and they did um, what was called a tool-assisted speed run later, right. which is basically at each frame you get to choose the input. And they showed that it was impossible. Oh, so not a single frame wasted, never yeah. mind a single yeah. second. So tool-assisted speed runs, basically the only way that you can um, screw up tool-assisted speed runs is if it's a game which your like algorithm is wrong. Right. The, your strategy has to be wrong. Right. Um, so people are still improving those because strategies can always get better. But they... they I think for whatever this game was, it was like an Atari game. So it's simple enough with the inputs. I don't think there was like any extra thing. And they proved that it was literally actually impossible to get that time. Right. Yeah. And we, we don't have that benefit, right? Like there's certain things. It's like when we talked about the nth metal packs and what legendary gears, what four and a half star gears yeah. are possible because we don't have access to the code. We can't know, but, <coughs> but in order to figure out whether certain gears are, are there, you'd have to open thousands of nth metal packs. It yeah. would take you hours yeah, and I just don't have that patience or the commitment to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, there were other, again, there were other claims. Um, there was a, the strength and conditioning coach of the Cincinnati Bengals making claims that guys were regularly easily closing the two toughest grippers, where really only a handful of people have closed the yeah. number four gripper under official conditions. Yeah, um, that made claims that his son carried a a millennium dumbbell that was instead of 172 pounds, 230 pounds. Just imagine that one dumbbell. Yeah. It's 230 pounds with a thick handle. Um, I mean, some, there's a variation of a few pounds, but it's really yeah. 230 plus uh, up a few steps, which is if you haven't attempted it or gotten close, done the training to get you to it, you have no idea how hard that is. And it might yeah. seem believable. And one of the things I want to get back to is the, the, the frame of mind that you have coming into it. So when you hear a claim yeah. as somebody who's never seen that but thinks it's possible compared to somebody who's actually put in the time to yeah, do the work. who's like done years of training, for example, right. and it's still not there. So there was an old th- uh, thread on a website that I participated in where someone was claiming a double bodyweight bench press and a triple bodyweight squat. And when he revealed the actual, and I'm saying actual with scare quotes around it, which nobody else can see. Is it scare quotes or air quotes? quotes. Why do you say scare quotes? I don't know, because it seems like that's the expression I learned. I understand air quotes because you're holding your fingers in the air. Yeah, it's, I've, 
See, I haven't asked you about that before. I realized, but yeah, it's. I'm pretty sure it's just air quotes. I, right, so I don't I, know why it's. I gotta look that up. But I it, don't. W- w- give me a guess at why you think it would I, be scare I don't quotes know. before just, we right? Because before we looked it up, what's your what's your guess at why it's scare? I, I have no idea. I really have no idea. I, all right, so this is <laughs> for, the, for the next Q and A. Or okay. P and Q and C and A. We'll, we'll update you on the scare quote journey. So um, when the guy revealed the actual numbers, the bench was 13 pounds short of being double. The squat was 27 pounds short of being triple. And when I called him on it, somebody said, give me an effing break. You're bitching at him for saying twice instead of 1.91 times and triple instead of 2.82 times. Get a life. And... So what's interesting, it might seem like that's the obvious and right answer saying, well, of course they're going to say double or triple because they're just yeah. rounding up and that's the closest number. When I when I read this, I would not have said it in those words, but I agreed more with the commenter than I did with you. Right. Honestly. And and my point is, when you, <coughs> if you've met any really strong guys, people who have put in the time and done the training to complete some sort of feat yeah. that has... Like a milestone feat. Yeah. They don't take that lightly. If anything, the strong guys are so careful about being saying exactly what they did, never claiming more than what they did, and being detailed about the conditions under which it happened yeah. to make sure that there's no misunderstanding that they're claiming a feat that they never did. Okay. So somebody who's... And it's not that they'd say 1.91. It, somebody who's actually gotten close would say almost... I've done almost double body weight bench press. I've done almost triple body weight squat. And and what's what's the chance that this person is just being boastful a little bit? And that's they're fudging the numbers for pride. But that's just it. it, it they are fudging the numbers. Yeah. That and it, it the obvious, I guess the, the the takeaway for me is that the interpretation is is different because of where you're coming from. If you're coming from the idea that well, yeah, it's close enough because this is something that you aspire to that's kind of cool but if you've put the time under the bar or you put the time into the game or you put the time into whatever and the effort and the work then the difference between getting it and almost getting it is really important Mm, okay and that it it demonstrates somebody or sorry it it's it shows the kind of person that would make that kind of claim is the kind of person who hasn't put in the time whether they actually did it or not is something completely different. But if you put in the time, this is an achievement that's a value. And what you do is you belittle the achievement when you take a, a shortcut to making the claim. And you're talking about specifically weights here, not, I think, the case of the battle points, right? Because I don't think it's applicable the same way. I think there's a similarity, though, too, when you talk about saying... Because the achievement is supposed to be, <coughs> as far as injustice, we're talking about getting to first place legitimately. Yeah. And I think, again, these are the kind of mistakes. If you're going to make these kind of mistakes, are the mistakes that you make when you haven't played the game much. See, I'm still not fully. <laughs> I'm still not willing to say that I'm sure this person hacked. I'm not saying I'm sure that they hacked. I'm saying that or haven't put in the time. I, I I'm I'm going to say that they they haven't put in the. Yeah, I, I'm willing to. I, I'm pretty confident. I don't. I don't know time. if I'm willing to go that far, actually. Yeah, I just, you know, somebody who's got to get to their job so they can't spend time on Reddit is not spending 84 hours in their week off to I, <laughs> see, I, this. I'm not I'm not willing to make that claim and I think that it's possible that the 84 hour uh number is wrong. I think we'll have to come at it at different levels of severity because I'm not willing to I think meet you exactly where you're at in, in yeah, that's okay. the finality of our state. Yeah, and I don't need you to agree and maybe um, I, I, it just occurs to me, I want to sort of close that loop where we originally talked about how cheating is a little different than hacking. Mm, okay. So the problem with, with hacking is <coughs> in order to do it properly, it takes a little bit of uh, expertise and yeah. uh, proficiency with other tools to do it. And glitching, even if it is cheating, is something that's available to everybody. And yeah. what it does is that it puts people at a disadvantage if they don't have access to the information they don't get to choose to use it yeah when it's clearly being used it's not being policed i mean if it was being policed but it it does put people at a disadvantage even if they don't choose to use it to me like cheating is like steroids almost oh i I, that's not a bad analogy except steroids to me would be sort of like hacking actually to me cheating is like steroids but if there was a if there was like a steroid league 
um, that was that was still the top. You know what I mean? It, where it's right. still harder to get into it, right? But is wouldn't that be like there's what? So what would separate steroids from the next level up? I think I think the problem is the analogy falls apart at the level where steroids make it really um, challenging for you to compete if you don't use them. And right. I think cheating doesn't do that to the same extent. Where cheating lets people... I think the the main thing is that cheating... Um, what cheating does is it gives people an opportunity to get... Bat- the difference is getting maximum battle points. And that's yeah. the only difference. All right, so but the, then the reason why that analogy doesn't work as well is because ideologically, cheating has more in, in, in common with hacking. Yeah. But from, from practical sense, uh, if we're going to use the a- athletic comparison, then cheating has more in common with training information, training techniques. Okay. Okay. That's but, fair. So steroids is something that you need <coughs> to be willing to, you need to have access to steroids, you need to inject yourself with it. And training techniques is just information. And it's something that's built in the game. It's already there. You know, I think, <coughs> I think what I would do is that cheating would be like st- figuring out and stealing the other team's like signals in baseball. Oh, yeah, okay. Because yeah, yeah. it's it's information. It's there, right? Right. If you figure it out, right, it's it's out there in the world, right? You're using right. information that they're actually freely encoding, right? Right. And you're just decoding it from whatever means you use, whether or not it's what the developers intended. So I feel like hacking would be steroids, and cheating would be somehow f- decoding somebody else's signals. For right. like knowing okay. what pitch yeah. they're gonna throw. That, that works. For That's me. the closest metaphor that I can find in sports. And I, coming from somebody who doesn't doesn't play sports. sports. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Let me let me chew on that for a bit. I have to think about it to to see how it fits. But it, it, on first blush, it actually seems to work pretty well. Yeah, because you're right. Steroids is has more of a negative effect than everybody else than cheating does. But I wanted to be a little bit, I think, harsher on cheating. Um, just because I think the battle point difference is something worth noting, right? I think it's important. Uh, I was having a conversation with somebody recently, um, actually, where um, somebody got mad at a friend. Um, not the person I was talking to. Um, this was relayed to me. Um, somebody got mad because uh, they phrased uh, pro-choice as pro-abortion. And um, oh, what I said is that I actually think that my my stance on that is that you have to be willing to be okay with calling it pro-abortion. Oh, I'm totally... Listen, I am pro-appendectomy. Yeah. But not when it's not necessary. Yeah, so to I, me... I am, I am pro-open-heart surgery. Yeah. So for people who need it. You're right. It's, it's like, I'm not pro-forced abortion, but I think it is fair when you, when you say pro-choice, what you mean also is that you're pro-abortion. You think they should be right. legal. You think right. they should have, you know, be accessible. And right. I think in the same way that when you call some... Uh, when somebody says that they're pro-life... They're pro force birth. They're pro force birth. I would say they are on at least some level anti woman's choice, right? You right, know, right. Um, anti like woman at- bodily autonomy, right? And I think it's important for um, you know people on both sides to be willing to like understand and be willing to be termed by like on like a fundamental level what it actually is that's happening. Right. As again, as long as it's not misrepresenting what you believe. Yeah. As long as you're not misrepresenting what you believe, I think it's, it's, I don't see a problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, uh, it's, it's a similar thing where I think it's important for us to acknowledge, right? Cheating. And it's it's important to us to not acknowledge it as this thing that is like totally like benign, benign. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's like some like objective, like, right. Oh yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Like I think it, the case that can be made against cheating is a good one. Yeah. My issue with it is though that if you ignore it, people are still doing it. We're not creating any of these. Yeah. And we're just making sure that it's not something that a, a, a few people hold as an advantage over others. Yeah. And I think you know I don't think there's anything. <coughs> I don't think there's going to be an absolute right or wrong. I definitely think that there's going to be people that I can agree with. Yeah. And, and respect that disagree with us. Yeah, I think um, yeah. the one thing that I can say for our stance on it is that we were not like, and we had a, we would have a couple of these, the people who would say, thanks for showing me this glitch. Now take down the video so no one else can see it. So it's just oh, for us now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Where we really, if possible, 
We want everybody to know about it and people to be able to make that choice. And we are making the choice in the positive. And I think that's the point where you can fault us. But I think disseminating information when a decent number of people already know how to do it, and especially the safety information whenever possible, right. is, uh, I would say, is a little harder to fault us for. I think people would argue still for stuff that isn't particularly well known, that yeah. it's disseminating information might be creating a problem. But, well, you know, I mean, back when there were glitches, rarely were we the first ones out. Yeah. And most of the time, I think the value that we added was testing it in different ways and being willing to take input from people who are using it and maybe make adjustments and learn yeah. things from it to make sure that people did not lose their accounts yeah. and did not uh, have their account suspended or end up corrupting their uh, progress. Yeah. So, that's so there we go. I think I think that's finishing up and then i, I want to reiterate what i said at the top we're not looking for people to come after anybody we're looking for people to form their own opinions right this is just i think us sharing our own perspectives and we hope that that's clear to everybody involved and i think f for a lot of this we were talking about an idea in general and this is the example that brought it to our attention right yeah where we're not saying in any way that this person is like deserving of all like the the rage or you know not rage maybe rage is not the right word but all the sort of um bad feelings, a bad taste in people's oh, mouth. I, I think there's a word for it, but I don't know exactly what it means. Opprobrium? I have no clue what that means. I'm going to look that up because I think I, it feels like it's the right word. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're not saying in any way that this one person is some massive issue, that they're everything wrong with injustice or anything like that. This is just sort of a way to talk about people making claims for what we feel is probably a pretty safe bet for somebody making a claim. And you um, are saying like with confidence that this person is on some level lying and uh, there's they fundamentally wrong they whether they're lying or not it's that the it, it's the bad faith it's a bad faith discussion okay okay that's fair and yeah. to me that's fundamentally as bad as lying would you say no no it's fundamentally the issue i have with what's going on because okay. it's, it's disinformation yeah and it when whether it's intentional or not what it, you're doing is you're you're corrupting the data set. Yeah. And so if if this information gets taken face value, then what it means... I mean, this was the argument against uh, the number four gripper closer that because of the, the training methods that people were injuring themselves trying to reproduce oh, what he was doing. Okay. Because, again, it's, it's also aspirational. Where people... <coughs> uh, you okay? Yeah, it's okay. Right, I'm, so, I'm recovering from illness. Yeah, where people are, are aspiring to be as good as this guy and yeah. close number four. And they were injuring themselves sure, by there's listening. A there's a technique called negatives where you take a gripper that's harder than you can close, yeah. use both hands to close it, and try to hold it shut with one hand. Yeah, okay. And what that was doing was causing people to hurt themselves, and it would they'd t get injured, and then they'd have to stop training for a while. Mm, okay. So, yeah, uh, and I, I think how, how bad... Uh, any given issue is, I think, is ultimately, at least in part, it's determined by intention and result, right? Are the, are the two oh, things. Oh, which ethics? Yeah. All right, so which... Well, no, I and I, I believe that it's a little bit of both. I believe that it is okay for you to judge yourself by intention, but you have to also be okay with other people judging you by right. results. But yeah, and I think both of them are bad, or, or both of them matter, Yeah. and both of them matter independently. Yeah. So no matter how good your intentions are, if the result is really bad... Yeah. Then it's a bad thing, and if you even if you end up not causing any harm, but the intention is yeah. bad, attempted murder or uh, manslaughter, mm -hmm. they're both kinds of things. Attempted yeah. murder, they don't actually die. Attempted mans or sorry, in manslaughter, you didn't try to kill them. Yeah. So I I think it's always, if possible, it's better to listen to other people and where they're coming from. I think that's the best way to live your life. But I think it's fair and reasonable to expect other people to judge you from outcomes and not intentions because other people can't know your intentions. And, you know, people people don't need to know exactly why you did a thing to judge you for it, I think, initially. And, you know, maybe we shouldn't, right? I think right. as as individuals, we shouldn't judge other people for pure outcomes, and we should judge for intentions also. But I think... Right, because you can't always control for outcomes. But, but as f myself, I think it's reasonable for other people to judge you for outcomes and not intentions. Sure. You know? Yeah, you know... Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I can't find anything to disagree with there. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe maybe that's... And I mean, as we're talking about it, maybe that's... I My uh, position's evolving a little bit more because it's... Originally, I was thinking more along the lines of Catcher in the Rye where, you know, like, 
like uh, Holden, where he hated phonies and oh stuff. Oh my right? god, that book was and a hard read. It was that. That was the only thing that interesting that I took from it was that yeah, it, there's actually something fundamental. I think people that their backs get up a little bit when they're yeah. dealing with dishonesty. Yeah. And in in this case, I mean, because we can never know the intention. I think that what where I'm, I, yeah I think that's I think that's where I'm sort of maybe diverging right. from you where I am yeah. saying no matter what we don't have their full explanation of intention so we right. can't know. However, to me, it's it's in this case the outcome is disinformation. Yeah. Where if you just leave this and leave these yeah. claims unopposed, yeah. Then what you're doing is you're you're allowing disinformation to be yeah. spread, and it's um it, it it can potentially come at a cost. It doesn't always. Yeah. But I think it, it does come at a cost. And I'm saying it's totally possible for um, your harshest interpretation of the events to be totally accurate, right? right? What I just have is I have a blank space where intention is, right? Because I think we still don't have that. And so it means that there's a very wide range of things that I would find acceptable statements, but would right. not be able to fully back myself. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, there we go. I think I think we've sort of refined our own perspectives on this as much as we can. And we're not... I think we're have decided to not do another full episode about this, no matter no, what no, happens. No, I th- yeah, I think we've said as much as, it, as we've got to say about it. This we might I... do a quick return if we get the video. Just, like, literally, like, oh, two actually, minutes. Oh, sure, sure. Something like that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'd lo- I'd, I would really like to see somebody finishing an ultimate in, what, less than four minutes. Yeah. In four, or sorry, three and a half minutes. And I don't think it's possible, and I think ultimately what the video will be is I think it will be a good... Ex- it will be our best bet at figuring out if this person made an honest mistake. And we need a timestamp. I mean, it goes without saying, like, the way there's a timestamp in here, so you Or know, just, you know... If, no, if, if we're the, not speeding up the video, right? That's like, true, but we, we... Yeah, we need a timestamp or we need audio so that we can tell. We need some way of being able to confirm that the video is not sped up. Right. Basically. Which right. we can do by literally, like, matching the ready, begin screens to each other that's true right like the we can just match the audio so that's not really an issue so i don't think we need a timestamp. it'd be useful but i think ios has an onboard screen recorder so if they use that that would be great but i think even that slows it down a bit the problem is i think if you use the onboard screen recorder it might lag you um i'm not 100 percent sure whatever anyways <laughs> um so what original because i didn't think it would actually there'd be this much to say about it i was originally... yeah because we we ended up talking about talking through our points i think a little bit more yeah so there's about 10 minutes left originally we were just gonna cut out in the middle of it but is there anything you want to say before we end this like what's been going on this week um has there been anything else because this was we, this was completely getting away from how we were going to ramble a little bit about what's been going on in our lives i don't know if there's anything specific that i am feeling like talking about i think the the stoville strawberry festival oh it was very fall, bad fallen yeah. into um a lot of, of what what's the word when it's disarray i, I don't know i didn't it's go. decrepit uh that well that's a little bit harsh but i think it's yeah. probably not nearly as enticing and attractive an event as it used to be yeah it's it's not awful uh I went and there was very few booths. It was not on the main programming day though. The main programming day was Saturday. Oh. So maybe that's my own fault. Happy Canada Day to everybody. That's true. And maybe that reflects the idea because the the, the festival is usually Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. And they don't go to Monday, but they did because it was Canada Day. Yeah. And <laughs> they should not have gone to Monday because there was almost nothing there. Well, and it was would have been unusual. Like people were not expecting to have anything. Yeah go to if they were following the typical i saw an, i saw an old crowd. man who was very very proficient at hula hooping oh that's kind of cool. i saw I'm not. i saw about three f- food trucks you're not an old man or you're not proficient at hula hooping uh i'm not proficient i i, I am an old man i'm not proficient i don't think you're hooping. an old man i'm not proficient at hula hooping. um but uh i saw an old man very proficient at hula hooping uh and that was that was i think the main draw of strawberry fest that day there was not a lot to be seen there were some activities for kids i think kids yeah. and families you know if you were nearby ish Right, uh, going as you know, not a child was yeah. not um, particularly engaging. But I think if you were a kid, there was some, there was enough stuff for you there. Right. But yeah, there was there was a lot of food trucks on the docket. I was interested in trying Hawaiian barbecue, and there was no, there was like two food trucks there when we got there. Hawaiian barbecue. Yeah. What's that? I don't know. That's why. Oh, I, you, I guess to try you don't it. know. Was there so there's supposed to be a Hawaiian barbecue truck there? Yeah. That they abandoned. They were not there. Well, they yeah. were. It was Monday again. I can't. I can't. Um. I can't really fault them because I wasn't there on the peak day, right? Because I don't actually know. I don't have the information for when it was good. But I just know that keeping open for Monday was a mistake. Right. 
Uh, so what else is going on is that the NBA free agent season has, has opened this week, and there was a lot of activity. Uh, Kevin Durant signed with the Nets, um, but the one that matters the most to me is Kawhi Leonard, yeah, who has not signed yet. He has not made his intentions known yet. He's meeting with the two LA teams, mm. and he's been willing to take the uh, meeting with the Toronto team last, which I think is if you're going to make a sign out of something, if you're going to interpret yeah. anything, is a good sign because... Because using the other ones as maybe bargaining chips. Yes. And so the the person who's got the last word, I think, has... They have an slight, opportunity to top everybody else's offer. Right. They have a slight advantage in being able to reframe um, what everybody else and what they're saying for them. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hopeful. And I guess... What, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but it's always puzzled me, and I, I never understood it myself, is... The loyalty that people have to a specific team. Yeah. When... You have mentioned it before. And oh. I think you said it was something you wanted to ask George R. R. Martin. Oh. Maybe, maybe you said it. that just to me, but I think you said it on video. Yeah. So that, you know, it's one thing when you, you live in the city. And I guess there's a certain amount of pride. Because the organization belongs to the city. Even if most of the players do not belong there. Or they weren't born here. Or they don't live here. Yeah. I would not say don't belong here. But uh, you know what I mean, though. I guess yeah. they, they, they don't make this their home. It's not... It's not their, um, it's not the team that they would be rooting for. It's not the team that they would be naturally affiliated with. It's, yeah, I guess it's not even that because you can still root for a team because Kevin Durant apparently was a Toronto Raptors fan mm, when he was growing up because he loved watching Vince Carter. Oh, okay. And, you know, Vince Carter's American. So, yeah. you know, it's when your other natural ties to a city. So let's say you, you, if, if I move from Toronto to, uh, I don't know where else. Would I still feel that same loyalty to the Blue Jays and the Raptors? And I think I would, but I'm not sure I understand exactly where that comes from. As <coughs> Yeah, so you're not saying change. that you don't understand other people. You're saying you don't understand this, and it's a behavior that you've even seen yourself. Right, and now that I'm finally watching Game of Thrones, I'm starting to watch I'm into Season 5 now. After wow. putting it off for ages. You are binging it. Yes. Um, that it, it, th There's a lot of similarities to the whole idea of the different houses, right? Yeah where you've got a loyalty like it's to people who are in your house even if you don't know them yeah like, you know i mean you might know of them but they're not you know your immediate family yeah but there's um tribe mentality yeah and that when you reach a certain distance so that you're willing to turn on each other and it makes it sense but I'm not, I guess I still, I'm not sure I understand I it. I think it just might be tribe mentality, right? Like, that's just sort of, like, the us versus them that's sort of ingrained in us. Like, uh, I think it was in the Meek Shall Inherit the Earth. And this is the kind of pop science that I'm going to be parroting. So take everything that I say after this with the biggest grain of salt and assume that it's wrong until you read it for yourself. This is me just saying things that I believe to be true. Okay. That I have not like looked up on recently enough to be anywhere near an expert but like the us versus them mentality which is really easy to create and then maintain and that like um it's especially easy when an authority figure acknowledges it where if you literally just put people in different color t-shirts right right they're more likely to like if they're distributing money right like a random sum of money to like participants right. they'll give people more for their color t-shirts and they'll give even more if they're acknowledged as you know like you guys are green shirts and these are other shirts Oh, Even if so, totally new. So, so instead of being implied, it's explicitly stated. Yeah. But so if I'm remembering the data correctly, and again, even if I'm remembering the study correctly, that doesn't mean it was like, you know, a good study. Right. Right. Is that there's, there, there's a really strong us versus that mentality where having something to differentiate people makes you like the people who are more similar to you, even if it's meaningless, even if it's something that's changeable, like the color of your shirt and acknowledging it makes it even stronger. So how does that affect it, though, when when we're talking about teams that aren't really, like, I mean, the, they belong in the same city that you do yeah. in name, and then you move away from the city, and the people are different, the team uh, changes, the, the management changes? Because they started out as your tribe, and I think, I think if it's just tribe mentality, and obviously things are very rarely that simple, I feel like I'm waffling a lot, and I should just you know, share my opinion at this point, because I've said enough that it is. I, I, what I believe, you know, is that it starts out as your tribe and it stays your tribe. And that can change. There can be stuff to change it, but your default state is that's your tribe. Yeah. I mean, we see that. I You don't watch Survivor anymore, do no. you? 
So, I mean, you talk about tribes. Literal like, tribes, yeah. Literal tribes. And how the allegiance that people some, somehow have to the original tribe they started off with, which was just... You know, random, yeah. Yeah, a lot of it was random. They might have taken some superficial characteristic and created tribes that had some theme. Yeah. But despite changing different tribes, meeting different people, the, the first tribe that they had somehow has a, a stronger hold on you than anything else that happens after. And it might just be because you spent time together and you create a relationship earlier. Right? Yeah, it might be. But, you know, for like anything else, there's a lot of data, but I think I think... You know, the idea of tribes probably does go some way to explaining it, right? Mm-hmm. For for just uh, teams, right? And they're, it, it feels like, at least when you're in the area, that no matter where they come from, they're doing something on your behalf almost when you're right. a fan, right? Right. It feels like you feel like you have a little bit of ownership. You feel like you're winning and losing with them. And right. so you feel like when somebody comes and does a really good job, they're winning on your behalf, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the things is that no matter, like, even when you move away, right, I think they're winning on behalf of your hometown or they're right. winning on behalf of the first team that you loved so or it, liked so, or supported. So there's so the nostalgic tribalism? Yeah, maybe. Even, like, even when the other stuff is gone, I think there's still that sense of this. It's good to see the thing that you either support now or supported successful. Right. Right. The and it's sort of gratifying. Lo- the thing that you loved. Yeah. And I think in a lot of cases, when people still support them, it it lets it be con- continue to be the thing that they loved. And your su- the successes and failures can be yours in the same way that they were before. And right. I think what that speaks to mostly is that just um, the same reasons why it was fun to support a team before, it's still fun. And if you support the same team, you have more history with them. So it's easier to right. keep supporting them than to switch. Right. So even just practically, I think if there's the joy to be had with it, you know, it's the same joy and it's an easy joy to not have to change. So there we go. We have used all of our time. And this is the last fight. Unexpectedly. So right here at the end, I think we can give a huge thank you to our patrons, maybe. Yes. Because we finished up. So do you want to take that away? Yeah. A big thank you to Consul Peasant, who's supporting us at the highest tier last word. John Ariama at the Your Message Here tier. Sean Farrell, Daniel Simonson, and Aaron Mall, who support us on the credit level. And Eddie G, Chris Wolf, and Lazlo Georgiatis, who support us at the gratitude level. Yeah, we, we really, really appreciate your support. It is still consistently surprising to us, and surprising in a sort of delightful way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, huge thank you to anybody supporting us in any way, and that includes uh, anybody who's listening right now. So huge thank you to all of you. Uh, we'll see you next time. Komoda. Komoda.